Welcome back to Power Lunch. Wells Fargo is out with a new research note stating that Amazon was the top seller of apparel and footwear in 2023 and by a wide margin. For more on the impact of the retail space and whether competitors have any chance, let's bring in the author behind this note, Ike Borachow. He's a managing director, director at Wells Fargo and senior retail and e-commerce analyst. Ike, um, you're confirming, yeah, Dom was just going on and on about how much the Chew, how, and he's not alone. The, the stuff that we're, it's just convenient. It's cheap. I don't even know if I like it all, but it's it's there. And in a pinch, when you need kids socks or back to school like I did, they show up and my inertia leads me to just use them instead of going to find better ones. Yeah, I mean, I think you said it. I think you said it pretty succinctly. I mean, they've done a good job to attract sellers by lowering fees, uh, uh, increasing value and shipping speeds to consumers. But I mean, just put this in context, Kelly, it's pretty it's pretty um, jarring when you look at the numbers. The apparel footwear business at Amazon pre-COVID was run rating about 30 billion by our estimates. Today, that number is closer to 60 billion plus. It's been run rating 20% Kager on a $500 billion market. So remember, the market grows 2% a year. So it's really pretty uh, incredible what they've been able to do over the past couple of years, for sure. Yeah. Ike, how, how much of this is the, the effect that Amazon has for the longest time been a company that has been a loss leader or a nonprofit generating entity because they've kept prices so low, but they've managed to build a, a customer book, if you will, where everybody just goes initially there to see anything that they want and they just kind of stick around. I, I guess what I'm saying is, Maybe they've done this through a lot of investment in getting people to go to their platform and not just because of the seller and buyer and marketplace dynamic that they built as well. Sure. Look, I think there's been a lot of um, puts and takes. There's been a lot of learnings. Remember some of the things they've done with private label, for example, kind of ramping that up. That's been uh, announced to have been pulled back a lot um, over the past year. So th there's been a lot of trials and tribulations here, but at the end of the day, I agree with you. It's kind of, you're gonna go on Amazon, you're gonna shop, what do I wanna throw in my basket? So, you know, when it kind of comes into who's at risk uh, in the soft line space, it's really not so much the fashion brands. I still think if you're gonna shop for fashion um, or, or high-end brands, et cetera, you're not gonna buy it on Amazon. The shopping experience is still not exactly uh, fluid to the extent that you'd no, wanna do that. it's terrible. It's amazing that it's not better, at the, but it's because it doesn't have to be, right? Nobody even knows the brands. No. When, when you buy some of these things, they're, they're not brands that you even, you're even aware of. Of course, and then there's the inertia of returning it, and, and you think, well, it's, it's, it's sort of the people like me. Like, there's a, a comic who has a whole sketch, which Dom might appreciate, about people who buy their clothes from Costco. He says, once you do that, you've given up. That's how I feel on Amazon. I've given up. I have no time to figure it out. So I just go and see what they have. And I don't even feel thrilled about it. But it's well, good I enough. I think that's right. But think about categories where you would be comfortable throwing it, throwing an item in the basket. So a pair of socks, a pair of underwear, maybe some baby clothes, a onesie. Mm -hmm. the, these are kind of the brands that we cover where there is some risk that you can kind of see that, that plays into it. So Hanes Brands. Uh, falls in that basket. Carter's falls in that basket. And I know it's outside of the soft line space that we're talking about, but beauty is really a big deal as it pertains to our underweight rating on Ulta Beauty. True. Right? The beauty brands are starting to look for distribution in places we never thought they would look. Amazon is absolutely there. Look at L'Oreal and Estee Lauder, some of the announcements they've made, making direct shops with Amazon over the past nine plus months. That's important to watch too. Ike, how important is the Amazon Prime membership dynamic to this whole story? Because when you say, let's just buy a pair of socks or some underwear or a pair of cheap slippers or foam slides or anything like that, it happens because you get one to two day shipping. It's at a price that you think is ridiculously low. And it's from a company that you don't know, probably from China or Vietnam or somewhere else. But Prime <laughs> is the reason why you do it, because it's just a convenience factor and it's there and you pay for it. Yeah, and it's going to push down, you know, broadly speaking, it probably limits or pushes down economics within digital commerce for, for the brands, right? It's going to push down free shipping thresholds, if not eliminate them. It's going to push up uh, the, the need to be able to deliver items within two days at a minimum. Maybe some, at some point, we're going to probably be at a next day delivery kind of kind of table stakes. But it's going to it's going to really hurt the economics for everybody digitally. It's been doing that over the past several years, that's that's likely going to continue for no, sure. More and more, and again, this is the desperation. I find myself clicking, you know, what can come between 2 and 6 p.m.? <laughs> it's so bad, but that's what I'm what I'm down to. Like, what are your, the, the final takeaways if this trend continues? Who else, and I think the beauty category, like you said, super important, one where we're seeing weakness. Where else might it not yet be showing up? 
There's no categories where we're, you know, on the cusp of something, you know, really big happening outside of beauty. I think the apparel thing, this has been going on for a while, like the, the run rate of what Amazon's done, um, you know, in the basics and essentials and consumables types of types of categories, low ticket, unbranded, like, think, think categories where the brand doesn't really matter to you, the, a white t-shirt, you know, how much does it matter to you exactly what's on the, what's on the back of that t-shirt. So um, those are really where the pressure points are. I think that continues. Like I said, outside of beauty, I don't see any big step ups and change happening uh, anytime soon. But this is going to continue to be a thing that we're going to talk about for years. All right. Ike, thanks for joining us. Appreciate